What does washing soda, vitamin C powder, salt, and instant coffee powder have to do with film? These four ingredients create a developer called caffeinol, which is used to develop black and white film. In this video, I'm going to show you the process that I use to develop my black and white film using a caffeinol recipe. This is Equisurf Film. Let's get started. Okay, this is the very first thing that should be done before starting anything when it comes to developing your black and white film is checking your fixer. So I've had this fixer mixed since May of 2020. It's lasted me quite a while, but it has been a while since I've used this. So I wanna check it first. And just to show you what the fixer is that's blended in this bottle. So what you want to do is take a roll of black and white film and just take that little extra bit of the film and cut it because I'm not going to need this. So you wanna take that little bit of the film and set it into a container. And then you wanna take just a tad bit of fixer, pour it in there, and then kind of stir it around a bit, agitate it, and then you wanna set a timer. And the point of the timer is to determine the fixer to react. Fresh fixer, this would only take a few minutes. And what I'm saying by taking, uh, the film will actually turn a little bit transparent. So if you saw the way the film is kind of cloudy right here, it's a little dark on this side. The fixer, if it works, this should be totally transparent. But we need to see how long that takes. Next is getting the water set up. And I have my faucet set on cold, so I just wanna fill that up. And once I have this filled up about to right at the top of the line there, I'm going to stick it in the refrigerator and let it cool down to at least 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Because once I start developing, I'm going to take this out and use it as a way to keep the film at the correct temperature because we have to wash the film between developer and fixer. And I'm using a glove to grab that piece of film. This is a chemical, the fixer is a chemical, so I just don't wanna get it on my skin. That's why I'm using a glove. And I'm just gonna put the fixer aside because I don't need this until the very end. And then you can see a piece of film here, it's transparent, right? So it works. And that's how you can tell if your fixer is still good. And then this, I'm just washing these out with water because I need to use these containers for developing. Here is where the fun begins. I will create two different parts of my developer because I wanna make sure that everything is dissolved in the liquid before I merge them together. First thing that you'll see are two containers here, filled about a half a cup of water each. I put room temperature water in this, so water straight out of the faucet. You can use distilled water, some people like to do that. When I first learned about caffeinol, I was creating several different recipes just trying to see what worked best and this caffeinol recipe i find has worked very well for all of my black and white film so you can see first here coffee three tablespoons get three level tablespoons now that i have the coffee in the liquid I wanna make sure all of this is dissolved because you can see there's chunks in there and I don't wanna leave those chunks. So I just take a whisk and I go for it. So that took me about, about a minute and a half to get everything blended up. There's no more chunks in there. The coffee is very well blended. I do like to check the bottom just to see if there's any chunks left in there, which I don't see, which is good. Okay, so we're gonna move this to the side. We don't need it. I'm gonna rinse off this whisk. Next is to make the second part of the developer. So going back to our recipe, you can see there we have two tablespoons of washing soda. Washing soda is in here, it's bulky, so I actually pre-measured it out. There's two tablespoons in this. I'm gonna drop it into the water and whisk it. All right, so that's mostly whisk. That took me a little less than a minute. There are a few granules left at the bottom, but definitely not to the extent as it was when I poured it in. 
and no need to rinse this off. You're just gonna use it for the rest of these ingredients. So next up, we have one teaspoon of vitamin C powder. So get the measuring spoon. We have one teaspoon of the vitamin C powder. I'm gonna make it about as level as possible, which is that good? That's good with me. Listen to the fizz. And then again, you wanna go to town on it. Okay, vitamin C all dissolved. You can still see there's a little bit left there at the bottom from the washing powder, but it will dissolve. The last bit that goes into this part of the developer is the salt. And if you look at the recipe, it is a quarter teaspoon of the salt. I have a quarter teaspoon measured out here. And before I put that in this water, because I want this to dissolve and I know that salt dissolves best in hot water, I have a little shot glass that I've repurposed for developing my black and white film. And I just pour this into the shot glass. This has hot water in it. Stir it around, make sure that salt gets nice and dissolved. That took about a minute and you can see that the salt is mostly dissolved in there. I'm gonna pour it into the rest of this mixture and whisk it one more time. The grains are totally dissolved. However, the very bottom, there's some little specks in there. That is actually coming from the washing soda, the cardboard from the washing soda. So why is this important? Well, if you have these little specks in here, these are solid pieces that will not dissolve. If it ends up on the film, it could cause spot on the film that cannot be removed. So I am going to strain this through a paper towel because I wanna get rid of the cardboard pieces. And we want to combine these two, but I do want to get the cardboard pieces out of this. So I'm just going to put two parts into one. So I have a funnel here with a piece of paper towel sitting in, inside of it. And so I'm just going to place this right here at the top and then slowly pour this part of the developer into the funnel. And I'm using the funnel because I don't want to lose any of the liquid. I prefer doing it like this with what I have because honestly, a coffee filter would work a lot better, but I don't have a coffee filter. We use a French press in here. This is worth it to me because I do not want any of those little specks to end up on my film. I prefer using my time versus having to go back and edit photos where this could have been avoided. Cardboard pieces are in there. Don't need that anymore. Now that I have mixed these two, I'm going to whisk Give it a nice stir. Okay, a little 30 second stir now that that's done. And there you have it. This is your caffeinol developer. So before you develop, you need to make sure that one, you have enough liquid in here. You can add water because you need to have enough to develop. And then two, you need to make sure that it is up to the correct temperature. I use a lab box. I know that the lab box will need to hold a little under two cups of water. So the water needs to fill up this tank at least up until this line because then I know that the film will be covered once it's in the spool. Okay, it's just at two cups. All right, so I know I have the right water level. So I just wanna have enough water for the amount that my lab box will take. Second, we're looking at the temperature. So let's just see where that temperature is sitting at. So you can see the temperature on this is right at 68 degrees. So this developer is at the correct temperature that we want it. Now that the developer has been created, it's time to load the film inside of the lab box. And what I'm developing today is a roll of foma pan. The best way I can explain this is when people ask me if I develop my own film and I tell them yes, they usually say, oh, cool, so you have a dark room. And I say, huh, no, I don't have that kind of space but what I do have is a lab box. So the best way I can describe this and explain it is a dark room inside of a box. So just to load the film, I'm going to remove the little handle there. Here's the spool. I want to make sure that the two lines right there on the spool are fully lined up and that I am putting the spool inside the box in the correct angle because you see lab box written there on the 
uh, label or on this little clip. So the film sits right here in this little slot. So I run the film underneath this little rod and then I place the tracking what I want to do is open up this clip and lay the film just on the inside of this clip and make sure it's right in the middle of the film. And I'll show you where I'm going to place it before I actually close that clip down. But you want to see it end up right there in the center of the film. You don't want it too far over on one side or the other. But once I have the film positioned where I'd like for it to be, I'm going to pinch down on that clip and it's going to click into place. Another thing that I like to do that, um, it's not actually on the instructions with the lab box, but I like to cut the edges of the film. It goes into the spool a lot easier than just with these little edges, because sometimes these edges get folded up by the clip, or it has been folded from being inside the cartridge. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, that's done. All right, so now the film is ready to go inside the lab box. You wanna make sure that the film is sitting inside this little tracking, and then I will insert the handle back onto the side and then begin to pull the film inside the spool. Now, I'm just gonna stop here and tell you that I know when I was loading this particular roll into the camera, I was having some difficulty, so a long strip of this film was actually exposed to the light, so I already know that as I'm pulling this into the spool, that this has been exposed to light. I'm okay with that, right? But just letting you know, if you loaded the film and you're not quite sure where was the first image taken on here, cause you can't see it, you need to have this lid on. You have to put the lid back on as you load this in. But I wanna show you the process here as to what it looks like. But as I'm rolling the film in, you can see it slowly starting to thread inside of the spool and you can hear that sound. And I like that sound, I want that sound. That's telling me it's being loaded into the spool. So at this point, I'm gonna put the lid on because I don't wanna expose too much. And I still listen for that sound. I wanna listen for it as I'm slowly threading that film into the spool. Okay, now I've gotten to the end because I can't tug on this anymore. There is a clip back here. This clip has scissors that will cut the film. You can hear that. So now the film has been cut from the cartridge and now I wanna continue spinning this. And now the film is totally loaded into the spool because I can freely move it. There's no more crunching sound. The next thing is to make sure you have your timing set up correctly for the developing that you want to do. At the bottom of my Kapanol recipe, I have these two lines written here. And this number, this is 32 slash seven slash 10 seconds plus four minutes. And then this is 37 and two minutes. And what these numbers mean is total developing time. These are the rounds. So for every seven minutes, agitating 10 seconds per seven minute round, and then the remaining time and I only have this set up because of the type of timer that I use. So this is the timer that I use to develop. I actually use this in the gym. So I am repurposing what I have, but I like it because it's an interval timer. And what this is showing me is here, I have six minutes and 50 seconds. So this is essentially one round. So one of the seven and then 10 second agitation, because I want to make sure that this is all equating into one seven minute round. And then by six, because this particular film I'm developing for 37 minutes. I like to develop my film for a long period of time because it brings out the shadows and the highlights. And I really like the depth that it brings. Most Kaffinol recipes will just show you to develop for maybe nine to 15 minutes. But I've experimented with this and I really like the 32 or 37 minute time frame. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of math with this if you wanna develop using this pro prolonged period of time. Once round six starts, I'm gonna watch this number for two minutes. So I know that I've developed for a full 37 minutes. Here's where I develop. And what I'm gonna do is as soon as I start pouring this, I wanna pour as much as I can out of here into the lab box 
and I will be able to see the liquid filling up here on the edge there. And it's okay if I don't use this entire thing. And once I'm done, like let's say there's a little bit left at the bottom, I'll just dump it in the sink because it is safe to pour down the sink. And then as soon as I get all of that in there, I must, I'm gonna press this as well at the same time and then I'll start agitating. So, okay, so here we go. We're gonna press the timer, pour at the same time. All right, so that's running. I just wanna slowly pour the developer in. I don't wanna to go too fast or else it's gonna splash over the side. I'm just gonna pour as much as I can. Let it sink in. It needs to take a little bit more. I'm gonna to start to agitate. And as I'm agitating, I'm just gonna watch the timer. I wanna do this for about a minute just to get the film nice and coated with this developer. We're at 527. I'm just gonna let this timer run. And what I've done in the past, because this is seven minutes, I'm not just gonna sit here and watch it. I'll go in and clean stuff up. Like I'm gonna take care of these dishes right here because I don't need them. And I like to use this time to get stuff done while it's developing, but this will beep. So I'll hear it. I'll hear it at the 650 mark. And once I hear that, then I know I need to come and do 10 seconds of that agitation, just that fast agitation. All right, we're on a countdown here. We have seven seconds left, three, two, one. All right, I'm gonna agitate for 10 seconds. All right, that was it. Okay, we have developed this for 37 minutes. I'm just gonna pour it out into the sink. All right, my goal here is to completely get as much as that developer out of there. Now I'm taking my pitcher of water that is still at 68 degrees and I am going to pour the water inside of here. And what I'm doing here by pouring the water is washing the film. I'm getting all of the developer off of the film so I can add the fixer. So I'm just gonna agitate it real quick. And by agitating, I am getting the water throughout the film. So it's just really cleaning it off from that developer. Just gonna pour that out. You can kind of see the color there. Pop that up, set it at an angle. I'm gonna take the lid off, remove this. Ooh, I see images. It's just not done yet. So what I'm gonna do is just do a continuous pour of the water to clean that developer off. And because it's at an angle, the water's just gonna pour out. And I don't know if you can see, there's some images on there. It's always exciting to take off the lid and see the images. All right, last thing, fixer. This needs to sit for seven minutes because I know that it takes seven minutes. That's when I tested it earlier. I'm just gonna pour the fixer inside the tank, fill it up till it is covering the film. And then I have the timer going. So I'm just gonna agitate for the first minute, let the fixer get throughout the film, just like I did with the developer. It has been one minute. So I'm just gonna let this go and sit here and I'll do some stuff. I'll come back, agitate, I might do some stuff, come back and agitate. We're coming up to the end of the fixer. I'm just gonna give this one last agitation. You can notice, but the film is now darker and that's because it's become transparent due to the fixer. So I want to put the fixer back into the bottle. Do not dump this stuff down the sink. It is a chemical. It is not meant to go into the water system. I'm going to do one more wash on the film just to get the fixer out of there. So water pitcher is done. The other thing I'm gonna use is, is some dish soap. I found that pretty much any dish soap works well, but you just wanna add a small bit. You don't wanna put a whole lot because dish soap can go a long way, but I'm just gonna add a tiny little drop of it. And what the dish soap does is it helps with the water spots in the drying process. So I'm just gonna give it a little 
agitation there. Dump the water. So now we will remove the little spinner. And here is our spool of film. Okay. Make sure you can see the images on there. So if you notice here, my film actually got stuck to itself. It didn't fully load in the roll. So that's the, that image did not come out, which I really hope that's not one of the ones I really want. Something I've learned about film is you, you can't always be attached to the photos because stuff like that happens and you're just never gonna get that image back. But I see some other really great photos. I'm really excited to scan these. Okay, so now I have the film hung in the door frame off the hanger. What I want to do is hang it from the end where the film has the most hanging off. And I take my glove and I just want to do one sweep down all the way to the bottom just to get any excess water off of there. And then the last thing I want to do here is take the film and hang the clothespin from the bottom. So you can see where the image ends. I wanna make sure I'm hanging the clothespin at the very bottom there. I don't want it to touch the image or else the clothespin will leave a mark once it's dried. Just like so. You can see where that image ends. And this entire process is complete. Now we wait for the film to dry. And then once it's dry, usually in the morning, I will scan it. Ecclesur film exists to inspire and make connections. And I hope this video inspired you to try your own developer at home and see what results you get with your black and white film. If this video was helpful in showing you how to develop your own black and white film using Capital, I'd love to know about your experiences in the comments below. Stay tuned for my next video where I will scan the film and show you the results of the images from using this caffeinol recipe. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. Also hit subscribe so you can stay tuned on everything film photography. This is Ecclesur Film. Thank you for watching.